All right, guys, welcome to the Garmin Unbound Gravel course preview. I am Josh Sprague from Orange Mud, here with... Ben Sachs, race director for Garmin Unbound Gravel. And what are we gonna be doing today? We are looking at a course preview, an overview of uh, features on course, what to expect, and how to prepare, prepare for success during the event in June. So we will be lined up this year, starting from 6th Avenue, way to the south of us, lined up by uh, expected finishing time. There will be uh, signs held up for specific designations from 10 hours up to 20 hours. So it's a self-selection process. You line up in the corral that you think uh, best fits your ability and your likely finishing time and uh, we will be releasing at 6 a.m. Just a heads up, there's gonna be a few thousand of your best friends here. Let's just good, become good friends with them, take your time. Uh, it's a long ways to go. We have 41 miles until the first water station. So plan your water and fluids accordingly. Maintain your pace as you go out. Try not to get the crowd think where you just go super hard, uh, but also try to keep it out of the ditches. A lot of people go in the ditches early on in the race, and it's what ends up putting a lot of them little thorns in the tires, which can make them tires go flat later on. So just mind your pace, have a good time. We'll see you at mile 41. All right, we are at mile 41, Oasis 1. This is our first water stop after 40 miles of being bunched up. Things are likely getting ready to separate and all. How are things gonna play out from here? Yeah, here we are at the top of Texaco Hill. Um, we just come through some, uh, some really excellent riding, climbing up to the, the top of the hill here. Uh, some kind of rough, rocky roads. Super fun part of the course. Um, this is your first opportunity to refill on water. Uh, this is something that we provide as the race organizers. It's not a support crew location. Um, it's just refilling on water. If you want to, you know, if you use hydration mix of any sort, uh, you will want to carry that with you so you can mix it with your bottles uh, as you refill water and then uh, move on from here uh, on to, you know, the next kind of 40 mile section to Eureka and your first official checkpoint. And be sure to look around the views from up here. You can't see it on the video, but it's awesome. All right, we have just finished riding through some of the most iconic parts of the Flint Hills, which is some massive open range. Let's talk about this. What's uh, what's up with all the open range here? That's right. So yeah, just coming off the uh, the rocky descent off of Texaco Hill, uh, we've been riding through some open range road. Open range means that uh, these are roads that do not have fences on either side, and they have cattle grazing to either side of the road. So most of the time, these are county public roads. However, both sides of the property on either side of the road are owned by one rancher. And then yeah. coming up after this, we have some big climbs, right? That's right, yeah. So you know, we finished some open range here. We'll get into some more later on, but in this next section, we've got a couple of uh, punchy climbs uh, before we hit Eureka. Uh, we've got uh, Teeter Hill just over there, and uh, a little bit later, the affectionately named the biatch. All right, everybody, welcome to Eureka! <laughs> this, <we> is, <laughs> this is roughly mile 78. Going to be for your first access to crew, and what should we be doing here? That's right. So after that first water oasis, this is the first location where you can have a full supported checkpoint. Uh, that means your own personal support crew or one of the hired supports, uh, our crew for hire or three feet cycling, uh, will be rolling into, uh, into town, uh, headed to Eureka High School where everything is contained. Uh, look out for either those uh, supports or your, uh, your color-coded zone where your own crew will be. And uh, we'll roll through there, uh, you know, resupply on you know, hydration, hydration nutrition, uh, rest for a moment, you know, lube the chain, uh, do any of those little uh, restorative things you need to do. Shh, sunblock. Yeah, that's a great point. Reapplying sunblock is a great thing to do to protect yourself from you know, the open skies and heat uh, that we're gonna see in June. Uh, and do all those little things uh, before rolling south out of town. It's a big piece of this course ahead. 
So get ready for that. It's going to be a lot of fun rolling out of Eureka. So in between Eureka and Hamilton here, this roughly 40 mile stretch is what I call the lowlands area. Uh, it's more low rolling hills through some you know, creek bottoms, some uh, low water bridges, uh, some kind of smooth curving roads, uh, a little bit more shaded. Uh, so it's a nice little spot uh, to get some rest from the sun before we head into the more heated part of the day. It's a beauty, enjoy it. All right, we are at Oasis 2, mile 119. When we get to town here, what are we looking for? Yeah, so we're here in the town of Hamilton. Uh, so this is another Oasis stop where uh, the event provides water, but there are no support crews allowed here. However, you do have an opportunity for resupply. The Home Sundry Cafe and Convenience Store will be open and available to purchase snacks and food. The Community Center building will also be open if you need to cool down, uh, get some AC. All right, leaving here, you have 45 miles up to mile 164 in Madison. This is the hardest part of the course based upon heat of the day, the topography, you're tired. Just get ready for it, settle in. Don't spend too much time here. Get out, have a great time. Once you get to Madison, the rest is gonna be history. All right, guys, welcome to Madison. We are at mile 164, and it, once you made it here, you have made it through the hardest parts of the course. This last section destroys so many people, so really be proud of yourself for accomplishing something that is pretty brutal. Ahead of you, you only have 40 miles to get to the finish, and I've never heard of anyone complain about this next 40. So what are people gonna be looking at coming into Madison? Find your, your folks here in town. Uh, with those different color coatings, uh, whether it be you know along the main street or along the side streets, and uh, you know do your last refueling, uh, resupplying before the, the finishing stretch. But be, be sure to be topped off. Carry your light when you leave here. No matter how fast you are, 40 miles can be quick. May not be. Depends on the wind. Depends on the terrain. Uh, but you will want to have a light rolling into the finish to be safe. And uh, from here out, enjoy the course. You've almost got there. All right, everyone, congrats on knocking down all sorts of amazing gravel back here in Did the it. Flint Hills. You uh, just came through a cool little tunnel. Got the last little bit of stretch of pavement going up through uh, Emporia Campus. So what's the name of this hill? Yeah, we're headed up Highland Hill. Uh, it may not look like a lot from here, but uh, trust me, with 200 miles in the legs, you are definitely going to feel it. But it is your last challenge to tackle before heading through Emporia State Campus and coasting into the finish uh, down Commercial Street and uh, raising your hands in the air to the cheers of all uh, all your fans and all the cowbells welcoming you uh, home. And uh, yeah, congratulations to everybody who completes it. You're all champions.